All right, so welcome to this week's episode of Alter Your Health Live. I'm your host, Dr. Benjamin Alter, and that is Dr. Susanna Alter. I'm Dr. Susanna Alter. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us today. This week's episode, we, um, we're going to dive into a new topic, and obviously that's what we do in every week, but the last week we talked about nutrition, and we did our very best to talk about you know, the simplifying healthy nutrition, healthy eating, what that looks like and what that feels like. Um, this week, we're going to, you know, dive into some more details around that. And you'll have to bear with me, bear with us, because there is some basic foundational, I would call it scientific understanding that's required in order to really grasp what happens when we put food in our mouth and then it, you know, it goes to nourish our bodies, right? It's just, it's kind of a, um, it's kind of like a mysterious process. And it turns out we don't know all that much, but we're going to, we're going to talk about what we do know and specifically with regard to carbohydrates, which is one of the macronutrients. So just to give a little bit of overview, Susanna, do you want to give a little bit of an overview of the different macronutrients? Sure thing. And I hope everyone can hear me. I just realized I would probably need my headphones with their mic. Um, so for the macronutrients, we have, there's three of them. There's carbohydrates, which we're talking mainly about today. There's protein, and then there's fat. And how how much into detail should I go about this? Then? <laughs> oh, oh, well, well, we're going to, we're going to, so yeah, carbohydrates, carbohydrate, protein, and fat, and then we're going to dive into carbohydrates today. So stay tuned for proteins and fats. That's kind of we're setting the stage. Yeah. So when it comes to carbohydrates, we're going to understand what the heck that means. And I'm going to start, like, this is introductory stuff. Um, cool. Yeah. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, it's like, what the heck is a carbohydrate? Well, the word carbohydrate means like carbon and then hydrate like water, right? Hydration. So carbo is carbon. Hydrate is actually the oxygen and the hydrogen that are associated with the carbon. So it's COH. Those are the molecules that we're talking about. And specifically, carbohydrates are created by plants and plants only. They are the only organisms on this planet that have the miraculous ability to create carbohydrates. And they do that by taking carbon dioxide, which we breathe out, and, you know, like the gas carbon dioxide, and they take carbon dioxide and they add oxygen to it in photosynthesis. Remember that, remember that reaction, photosynthesis, where the plants take carbon dioxide plus water and with the sunlight, right? And they create that energy that they, they um, transform that energy of sunlight into chemical energy in the form of carbohydrates. So carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. And specifically, when we're talking about a sugar in terms of our metabolism, we're talking about C6H12O6. So that's like one carbon and then one, one um, water molecule times six. So it does it with six carbon dioxides. And we get a carbohydrate. That's a simple sugar. That's a simple sugar that's created by the plants plants create carbohydrates, right? Um, and that, that's, that's kind of the, the building block of a carbohydrate is those simple sugars, but they actually chain up into polysaccharides, which means like multiple sugars. And maybe you've also heard starch, which is another name for polysaccharides. So there's these links of carbohydrates and they create all of the plants that we see today with our eyes, you know, on this planet that are growing in the, from the ground, they are carbohydrate-based organisms. And, um, and they, the plants also have different proteins and different fats, but we're going to focus on the carbohydrate or the starch that is created by plants. Um, so, and so I want to kind of take us through the digestive process, right? We're going to understand what happens when we take a plant, a carbohydrate, we put it in our mouth and we chew it up and we bring it into our bodies as fuel. Um, so it all starts right here, like the tip of your tongue, 
your tongue, um, your tongue, well, your mouth, right? Your mouth creates saliva, with, which has all these chemicals and enzymes and all these amazing things that help digest carbohydrates specifically. You know, we don't digest proteins in the mouth. We don't digest fats in the mouth. We only digest carbohydrates or starches starting in the mouth with an enzyme called amylase. So it all starts in the mouth. And what I find super interesting is if you take a piece of bread or a potato or any other carbohydrate that's just kind of bland or maybe like, you know, minimal taste, if you take it and you put it in your mouth and you just kind of suck on it and just allow the enzymes to work in your mouth before you swallow it, if you just kind of allow the, the carbohydrate to be in your mouth with the enzymes, you break down those starches or those polysaccharides into uh, single simple sugars, monosaccharides. And we have taste buds for monosaccharides on our tongue. So we can taste sweetness from things like a piece of bread or potato that don't have any added sugar, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I just said the word sugar. Um, so carbohydrates are sugars, right? These, these, are, these are sugars. And sugar has gotten such a, oh my gosh, like it's like the devil in this world today, right? We, we want to stay away from sugar. And I agree. And I don't, right, Susanna? Like we, we do want to stay away from sugar. And we're, but we're carbohydrates. This, this talk is about distinguishing in carbohydrates understanding how like what is a carbohydrate when it comes to it because we know what sugar is like a table sugar or high fructose corn syrup or those additives that are added to junk food but obviously we're talking about carbohydrates like the simple foundational element of life anything that you want to add to that dr susanna well you're breaking up a little bit my connection is not so great i was thinking um might have to change the setting on my phone. But I think, you know, what, what I think I heard you say is that um, in talking about sugar and how sugar has become such a demonized word, um, that's usually when we're using the word sugar, um, thinking about sucrose, which is uh, a fructose and a glucose molecule bound together. So that's a disaccharide. Yeah. And what you're saying is that um, in that form of white sugar, all the nutrients have been stripped away um, from whatever the original um, food source was. So, or in, in the form of uh, high fructose corn syrup or any other kind of processed sugar. Um, so that's much different than uh, the sugars that we find in whole foods. Yeah. Yeah. So Is that now what that we... Yeah, well, now that we understand like carbohydrates, we're going to talk about the different types of carbohydrates, right? We, and we understand that carbohydrates are created by plants in this process of photosynthesis. And we get to, well, backing up one more step. So we create carbohydrates through photosynthesis, the plants do. And then we, and then we put them in the, our mouths and we're nourished by these carbohydrates. And when we breathe, we breathe off carbon dioxide. We breathe off the fuel for the plants to make carbohydrates so that in my frame of view that is the circle of life our breath feeds our fuel our breath feeds the plants the plants create carbohydrates the carbohydrates fuel us and that's like in a large sense the circle of life life force energy um, you know it's it's not that simple but it's amazing to think about so now diving into the different types of carbohydrates right so Susanna you mentioned glucose, you mentioned fructose, um, as, and I want to talk about the, first I want to talk about the monosaccharides, the simple building blocks that make up polysaccharides. So there's glucose, which we're pretty familiar with. That's what we measure in a blood test when, um, you know, you poke your finger and you me measure your, your capillary glucose in your, in your blood. That's your levels of blood sugar. That's glucose. Um, and then there's fructose, which is the primary sugar in fruit. Um, so glucose is the primary sugar in most vegetable matter and, and also fruit to a large degree. Like a lot of plants have glucose. And, fru and fruits are high in fructose. 
And, and a couple other simple sugars are galactose, um, which is a predominant milk sugar in, in milk, you know, and specifically like, you know, mothers who are breastfeeding, they increase galactose production only, and there's an enzyme that gets turned on only when they're breastfeeding, of course, to make the, the breast milk and the sugars that are, that are part of the breast milk. Um, and then another simple sugar is ribose, which is the building block of your genetic material. Um, ribose is the, the backbone of DNA or deoxyribonucleic nucleic acid. So your DNA is a sugar-based molecule to a large extent. Um, so we need, we need sugar. You know, sugars are, are a controversial topic. So that's what we're cutting through in this week's episode. Ah, man, I need to take a breath. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's such a great review. It really is. <laughs> yeah. So, so when we're talking about, again, so we're back to the simple sugars, the glucose and the fructose, you can add those together. And this happens in nature as well as synthetically in a lab to make sucrose. So sucrose is white table sugar. Um, it's one part glucose and one part fructose. They're bound together to make sucrose. Um, and it's interesting that high fructose corn syrup, which we're all you know, familiar with in our world today, high fructose corn syrup is actually not predominantly fructose. It's predominantly sucrose. It's a kind of a one-to-one -one ratio of glucose to fructose. So we, we, you know, fructose has also gotten a pretty bad reputation in our world today. Uh, fructose is, um, you know, fruit sugar, because I, I think it has something to do with high fructose corn syrup. People are like, oh, fructose, that's in fruit. Like, I need to stay away from fruit as well. But we, it's important in our world today to, you know, cut through this stuff and make the distinctions. Like, what is it really? And when we eat a piece of fruit, we're eating fruit, we are, it's rich in monosaccharides, you know, naturally, obviously naturally occurring monosaccharides, um, one of which predominantly is fructose. Cool. So, <laughs> so we, we eat plants, we eat the carbohydrates, they go in our mouth, it starts in our, in our mouth, the digestion of these carbohydrates with amylase. We break down these polysaccharides into simple sugars. Um, it also continues in the small intestine and the stomach, right? Well, first, for the, first the stomach, then the small intestine, of course. And we end up with these simple sugars that go into the bloodstream, you know? So we've got the glucose and the fructose going into the bloodstream primarily. Those are the two simple sugars that we're most concerned with when it comes to fuel for the body. So glucose requires this hormone in order to be taken up by cells in the body. Glucose requires insulin in order to be taken up by cells in the body. Um, fructose does not require this hormone. Fructose goes right into the cells, just wanders right in, and we are fueled by, you know, once in the cell, these, car these carbohydrates, these simple sugars, are broken down to create energy on a cellular level, cellular energy from carbohydrates. You need insulin to get the glucose into the cell. You do not need insulin to get fructose into the cell. So what does that mean? Um, well, we, we know that diabetes is insulin resistance. So if you have a lot of sugar in your blood that you and then insulin resistance leads to high blood sugar, right? So if you have a lot of sugar in your blood that can't get its way into the cells, that is called diabetes or insulin resistance. And then long, you know, after months to years, that becomes full-on diabetes. Um, so, um, so we need insulin to be signaling properly in order to get the glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cells to get broken down to create cellular energy, right? Does that make sense, Susanna? <laughs> yeah. And I know, yeah, yeah, you've you've done a you wrote a like a very comprehensive paper on 
um, a high carbohydrate diet and the, for the treatment of diabetes. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. do you want to tell Should us about that? Bit about that? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, well, I think um, what what we typically learn in our uh, medical education when we're talking about treatment for diabetes is that uh, the most important thing is obviously to control the blood sugar levels because if sugar is too high in the blood for a long period of time, it can damage other organs in your body, such as the kidneys and your nerves and your heart and, um, and your eyes. And so the, the first point is control blood sugar. And the way that uh, we are typically taught to do that in terms of um, dietary intervention is by consuming fewer carbohydrates. Um, and focusing more on protein and focusing more on fat. And um, in this paper, I was actually investigating this whole other body of research that I feel like is actually kind of uh, ignored in the medical community sometimes. And that's the research that's been done on intramyular, intramyocellular lipids. And what that long, big word means is basically fat deposits inside of your muscle cells. And so what happens when people eat a diet that's high in fat, particularly saturated fat, is that the lipid actually is stored inside the muscle. And what that does is it interferes with the signals between insulin and the glucose transporter that's needed in order to let glucose into the cell. So to kind of like break that down a little bit, because I used a lot of big words there. Um, so if insulin is like the key that lets glucose into the cell, uh, insulin, when it, when it binds to the cell, it sends this cascade of uh, signals to the glute transporter, which is basically this this transporter that allows glucose into the cell and you think usually you know why doesn't the why isn't this transporter just like always there but it does it it needs insulin in order to be on the surface of the cell to let the glucose in and so when there's too much fat in the cell it interferes with those signals and the glute tra the glute glucose transporter never really actually allows the glucose to come in. And so all the glucose stays outside of the cell, raising the blood glucose levels. So. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, yeah, because, the, and the reason obviously we dove into that tangent is because a lot of people hear about carbohydrates and there's a little, I mean, I can see it when I'm talking to people. It's like their eyes are like, oh, I'll hold the bread. Um, I'll do like a bunless, you know, sandwich. Or I'll, you know, <laughs> like focus on the, the protein or focus on, you know, the different macronutrients. But we wanted to, but thank you for that explanation of why, um, really what the underlying cause is to diabetes, which is referred to as carbohydrate, um, well, some people call it car carbohydrate intolerance or mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm you know, like they're supposed to, and they say that they're supposed to severely limit carbohydrates, but, but we know the underlying cause of carbohydrate um, dysregulation or blood sugar dysregulation is actually the intramyocellular lipids, mm -hmm. as, as you said, Susanna. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I'll just, I'll just to like say one more thing about that, that research article I wrote, um, it, it, it was focusing on high carbohydrate diets as a treatment for diabetes. So um, we t Ben and I talked about this a little bit last week, but uh, if someone with diabetes consumes a meal that is high in carbohydrates, but also high in fat, there's still going to be that, um, that intramyocellular issue going on. So blood sugar levels will stay high. But if, if a person eats a, fat, uh, a meal that's high in carbohydrates and low in fat, 
as the intramyocellular lipids disappear, then the insulin resistance is going to lessen and then the sugar is going to be able to enter the cell and blood sugar levels will normalize. Yeah. So, so uh, you can continue talking if there's anything else, but I wanted to ask our audience if there's any questions or any clarification, clarifying points, um, that we can yeah, it's address. Yeah, good time, good time to ask questions. But for sure. you know, while, while questions are being pondered or whatnot, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I really wanted to cover here. Um, I, I, I just wanted to kind of drive home that, um, well, there, there's, there's one other thing. Uh, cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, so so the, the one other thing that we talk, that I hear about so much, that I hear about so much, and I'm sure all of you hearing in might have some experience with is sugar cravings or, car or carbohydrate cravings. Um, I think we all have a sweet tooth, right? We all, to some extent, have a sweet tooth. And a lot of people are, are mustering up all of this willpower to overcome their sweet tooth. But when it comes down to it, yes, we are all carbohydrate-fueled organisms. And that is our predominant source of energy. You know, I, I talked a little bit about how carbohydrate, well, I actually didn't get into the Krebs cycle and all of the oxidative phosphorylation, how carbohydrates get broken down to create energy. We don't need to go there. Trust me. Um, I don't want to go there. Um, <laughs> but, but we are fueled by carbohydrates. So when, we, when, we, when I hear someone say, oh, I've got a sugar craving, what that means to me is that their body is craving high quality fuel in the source of carbohydrates. And, and some people, and the, the orthodox approach to addressing sugar cravings is to just, I, I mean, to be quite frank with you, I, I don't even know what the orthodox approach is. It's kind of just to get over it, to like detox the, you know, it's like a, it's referred to as a drug, right? Sugar is, and, but once again, we're, we're talking about carbohydrates and they're in natural form that nature creates. We're not talking about the added stuff that, that we throw on things. So when I hear people talk about sugar cravings, what that means to me is they need more high quality, dense sources of carbohydrates. And the best source of high quality, dense carbohydrates, you know, mon mono and polysaccharides is like fruit, um, whole grains, legumes, sweet potatoes, starchy vegetables, these kind of things will satisfy, well, over time, it might not be an instantaneous thing, but over time, these kind of things will satisfy sweet tooths because your body will no longer be craving that high quality energy. And on that note, I wanted to maybe end with, um, maybe we can both, Susanna, we can both share our experience with with kind of a carbohydrate-based diet and how that has led to increased energy levels, increased stamina, increased um, you know exercise performance, and these kind of things because it's the fuel for our life. You know, carbohydrates is the fuel for life. So, so Susanna, why don't you share your experience with um, increasing high-quality carbohydrate sources in your diet? Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, I, for, I'd say a large part of my life, I, I was always focusing more on uh, protein in my diet. I got to make sure I get enough protein and, um, yeah, just not really giving much thought into carbohydrates. Uh, thinking, you know, kind of, okay, I need to, like, eat carbohydrates in moderation, Um and I started eating, I started focusing more on incorporating more uh, whole food forms of carbohydrates almost a year ago. And ever since, I, um, I honestly feel a lot more energetic and I feel the strongest I've ever felt in my entire life. And I've always been a really active person, but I, I feel like my muscles are just denser and stronger and um my endurance is longer as well 
And one other thing I've noticed is that I always, always had sugar cravings at the end of the day and always wanted to end the day with something sweet, like a piece of chocolate or something like that. And now I notice that when I do on days where I, I'm definitely getting enough uh, good quality carbohydrates in my day that I am not craving any, any sugars because it feels like my body is satisfied and it has what it, what it wants. Yeah. Um, so that's been my experience so far. I, I do, I would say that when I started transitioning uh, away from protein towards more carbohydrates, there was, um, I don't know, something felt incomplete, like the meal felt incomplete. Like, where's, where's the protein? And I think it's because um, I was so used to eating um, yeah. meat. And, like, really, I mean, if you eat a small piece of meat, it's so calorie dense that just a small amount of meat usually satisfies you. Versus if you eat more carbohydrate-based meals, you're going to have to eat a lot more food, just a bigger mm -hmm. volume of food in order mm -hmm. to to get all the nutrients that yeah. um, that your body needs. Great, thanks. And I'm, I'm just gonna address this question from Kelly, thanks. Um, yeah. The rising levels of prediabetes and otherwise healthy individuals and the link to our food sources, yeah. So when you say otherwise healthy individuals, I, I assume that means like that's their only condition, is just like this rising level of blood sugar, you know, which is the diagnosis for diabetes and like like Susanna was talking about, the underlying cause of blood sugar um, dysregulation is intramyocellular lipotoxicity, which is the, the accumulation of fats inside muscle cells to the point where they dysregulate the insulin signaling pathways. And another thing that does that, in, in, in addition to saturate, high saturated fat in the diet, which is predominantly animal fat and... Um, yeah, that that's mainly what we're talking about. The other thing that does that is environmental toxins. They create intramyocellular toxicity, which dysregulates, you know, which is a whole nother kind of can of worms that we're not going to get into in this episode because we're kind of out of time. But um, when we're talking about prediabetes, um, really, first of all, that's awesome that it is caught at a level that is you know, pre-diabetes because, you know, it's just one step closer to normal than, you know, diabetes. But diabetes is a, is a condition that doesn't happen overnight. You know, this, this happens over years to decades. So when we're talking about pre-diabetes, really the, the thing to do, which it has been controversial, but it's almost like not, not even controversial anymore. The thing to do is to go fully plant-based and to get those uh, saturated fat molecules out of the muscle cells so that the insulin can start signaling as it as it should. That's the thing to do um, when when pre diabetes is, is diagnosed. And like I said, the good thing is that it's pre diabetes, right? Whatever that means, it's just like not full blown. Your the blood sugar is only only a little bit dysregulated, so we can bring that back. I mean, I've heard of that sort of thing being reversed within a week. Um, you know, it's not the crazy thing about the body is that these conditions, these chronic diseases build over years to decades, like I said, but they can be reversed, some of them, pretty darn quickly. Our body is extremely resilient. And when we create the optimal environment by fueling the body properly, and, we're, and, and, I th and what that means is, in, you know, in my experience, what that means is a high carbohydrate, nutrient-dense, plant-based diet that is low in added um, fats, low in processed foods, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. On that note, um, we didn't talk about another kind of carbohydrate thing, but that's going to be a whole other conversation that I'm really excited about. It's my favorite. It's my favorite thing. Fiber. Fiber, oh, is, fiber. Yeah. fiber is a carbohydrate that is totally <laughs> overlooked in our world today. So I'm just going to leave with like a little, maybe a cliffhanger on, on fiber. What about um, your experience? With, oh, well, it's, yeah. it's, we've already been going here for a while, but um, mine is similar to yours, Susanna. Like I've always been kind of this, oh, it's important to have this, you know, 
balanced diet, you know, fat, protein, carbs on every plate, every meal. And that is the best way to create sustainable energy. And in my experience, um, man, not only, well, this is my experience. So not only do I feel better than I ever have in my life, I enjoy my meals more than I ever have in my Ooh, life. Ooh, yeah. Because when we're talking about when we're talking about carbohydrates, when we're talking about whole food plant-based sources of carbohydrates, we're talking about like dense nutrition like potatoes. We're talking about sweet potatoes, we're talking about legumes and beans. We're talking about all of your favorite vegetables um oh my gosh like that's that's probably my favorite thing <laughs> the other thing i must say i must say and i and i know you know this about me susanna but when it comes the other thing about the food is when it comes to cleaning up the food when you're only eating plants in their natural form like a steamed sweet potato um you know some some steamed um, broccoli, some water fried, um, you know, vegetables, there is no cleanup. Like you can literally just like wipe the thing and there's no bacteria in your pan. There's no oil streaks. Um, and think about how that is going in your body, your body. You don't have to clean up your body either. That's, I mean, that's, uh, so that's what's going on. That's my favorite part. Um, I do have a great chef. I do have a great chef. There she is. Dr. Susanna is my, is my personal chef. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but thank you, Dr. Susanna. And for anyone who wants more information about who's kind of stuck with us this far, um, feel free to go to the website for more information, um, alter.health slash podcast. On that note, peace and love. And until next time, guys.